So it really is all on the line at Amy Park after the week from hell at Melbourne Victory. But is it uh, a good time, Andy Harper, to be facing a club equally desperate for points? Well, that's what makes this particular contest so fascinating, Simon. You look at this Melbourne Victory lineup, even though there are players unavailable with injury, but the front three of Kuehl, Thompson and Hernandez, it really is a mouth-watering concoction, at least in potential terms. And if the three of them can hit their straps even slightly, Gold Coast are going to have a difficult afternoon. Well, here's Archie Thompson launching the first raid into the penalty area. He goes. Chris Griffith Jones says it's a penalty. Only 40 seconds on the watch. Another big referee in call. Uh, Chris Griffith Jones had no doubts. And victory had the spot kick. And well, early joy for Mehmed Durakovic. Perhaps if they can convert the spot kick, Andy. Yeah, we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. But an early Panadol for Mem Djurakovic. And it's a familiar route to the penalty spot. It's Archie Thompson who has been on field. The saviour for Melbourne Dr victory so far this season. Who's danced Paul Beekman's and Mary Tune. Who, incidentally, has yet to regain his feet. He looks in all sorts of discomfort. The Dutch defender... And there was a tangle of legs which brought the penalty about. I can also let you know, Simon, that Harry Kuehl is hovering with ball in hand. Here's the situation. Beekman's number six. Archie Thompson turns inside. Well, he's exposed himself by reaching across Thompson. That's what the referee has seen. And that's what he's awarded the penalty for. Well, he got a penalty in dubious circumstances against Perth Glory. Paul Bateman's continuing to have treatment. Well, was it clear-cut enough, Harps, in your opinion, no. to award the spot kick? No, it wasn't clear-cut enough, but I'm equally... I'm gonna, this sounds like I'm hedging my bets, but I'm equally happy to back a referee who's going to be positive and decisive. But yep, yep, that is in the, for Bateman's, by the way. That is in the soft end of the spectrum for penalties, there's no question. Well, what a big moment this could be in the context of Melbourne victory season and, of course, Gold Coast United. Goodness me, we've had some drama involving the victory this season. And away we go again. Different venue, same sort of script. Remember Ante Kovic being sent off in the opening seconds against Brisbane Raw. And a penalty conceded. Now the victory have won it and Harry Kuehl to take against the ex-victory goalkeeper Glenn Moss. scores and that's the goal they've been waiting to see in Melbourne the victory lead well a massive relief for Kill, a massive relief on a much bigger scale for the Melbourne Victory Football Club what a brilliant leg up they've been given to this game Archie Thompson again winning a penalty it's the third penalty he's won for his team this year. Danny Alsop scored in general play against Perth, and outside of that, it's all been the Archie Thompson show. Layup. Ferreira. Rojas. Ferreira says, give it to me, which Rojas does. Now they're squaring up for Seleski. Good movement by Melbourne Victory. Archie Thompson, drop of the shoulder. Rojas, and it cannons back off Christian Reese. And the referee has blown for a second penalty. Jonas Sally penalised. What would you make of that one, Hart? Well, I don't think the players know what to make of it. Certainly Christian Reese was the last to interfere with the play but that was the ricochet Archie Thompson jinking and turning again Rojas fires away uh, Sally stretches in doesn't win the ball yeah fair enough yellow card for Sally who hit the post a couple of minutes ago now he's conceded a spot kick and Melbourne victory after having been given an early free kick to take the lead and have a second opportunity to double their money from 11 metres. And, and interestingly, Hernandez. it's going to be Hernandez. 
not Harry Kuehl. Well, the second penalty award, perhaps more clear-cut than the first. Griffiths-Jones again well positioned. And here's Hernandez for 2-0 for the victory. Different side, same results. Melbourne victory two, Gold Coast United nil. And however controversially they may have, they may have come around, the two goals probably a fair indication as to the way this match has opened up for 23 minutes. Gold Coast coming back into it slightly the last few minutes, but they've really been all over the place. Rojas taking evasive action from the outstretched leg of Jonas Sally. Referee decides that's an illegally outstretched leg. Penalty awarded, penalty converted. And the nerves are settling for Melbourne victory. They've had the week from hell and they've had the start from heaven. It's the way football goes. Decisions go against you. It seems to be an avalanche at times. You hit the post, your team concedes penalties. You think they're softly awarded. You can mount a, an argument to that effect. And the yellow cards are flowing your team. You feel the whole, the way, you feel as though the whole world is against you. a two-footed challenge by Vargas and he's in trouble it's a straight red card well I have to say it looked nasty at first glance they're uh, calling for attention it's Golgo Mabratu uh, who is the recipient and Roddy Vargas is off and Melbourne victory's perfect start to this game has been ruined by what looks like a reckless challenge from Roddy Vargas and Mehmet Durakovic's side are down to 10 men and even though they lead Hart, sometimes you just wonder about Victor they can't take a trick what is he doing there well he's nearly on halfway is there any need really for that sort of challenge well no <laughs> but Mabratu's jumped in with two feet as well I don't think the ref had any option there if I'm the ref I'm having a quiet word with Mabratu before he gets up and plays on because he left in with two feet as well he just stayed on his feet I don't think Roddy Vargas can have any complaints. It was reckless. It's a straight red. And when victory were looking good, it certainly vastly improved from last week. Now they'll feel like they're right under the pump again. Probably the only uh, person not appreci appreciating his play this season is Tando Valapi, <laughs> who, of course, is uh, out injured at the moment. Says Jung Schlager. Bratu having to stretch, but uh, much more involved in the game now. Is that a penalty? It is! A third spot kick! Diogo Ferreira with the challenge on goal goal Mabratu, and right on the stroke of half-time, Gold Coast have a big chance to get back into the game. Well, Mehmet Djurakovic's head just went into his hands. And Mabratu was, in my opinion, always going to be the man most likely. He's got that really long stride, he's enormously fast. He drew Ferreira into that challenge. The referee was as quick on that decision as he was on the two Melbourne victory calls. And Mabratu regaining his feet and exploding out of the blocks with enormous power and length of stride. Touches pass, clear penalty. Zero question at all. And the Gold Coast, if they can convert, will be right back in the contest. What a fascinating A-League experience this has been this afternoon at AB Park. Well, penny for your thoughts, Mehmet Durakovic. We've had three penalties and one red card. And the drama for the first half is not yet over. Now, Ante Kovic, of course, saved a penalty in uh, round one from Brett Emerton against Sydney FC. Can he prevent Dylan McAllister from drawing the Gold Coast back into this game? Cards. Good penalty from Dylan McAllister, and they'll go into the sheds with the scoreline reading 2-1. And what a fascinating half we have had here at Amy Park. Was that the shoulder or was that the arm? The referee says play on. This is Ben Halloran, slipped by Fabio. Chance for the Gold Coast, and they've equalised through Peter Jungschläger. 2-2 at Amy Park. High drama, again involving Melbourne victory. And the smile is back on the face of Miron Blyberg.
Would you credit it? Well, look away from this football match at your peril. Victory scored the opening goal inside 40 seconds. Victory are claiming handball there on Ben Halloran. But he persevered, played the whistle. Fabio's down like a nine-pin. Good call cool play from Halloran. And Jungslager already looking more comfortable in his elevated midfield position compared to his right fullback position. Bangs home the equaliser. And you have to shake your head in truth, clear the, the fog and realise what you're watching here at Amy Park. Amazing. Are they perhaps fighting to save Mamet Durakovic's job? It would be desperately harsh. With just one defeat on the board, but that's perhaps the reality facing the Melbourne Victory Supremo. I spoke to him before the game, he said he understands the pressure that the coach of this big club brings. Maybe his team could relieve it for him here. Here's Hernandez, threads it through, Thompson is onside. Archie Thompson has support from Broxham too, chips it back in, into the back of the net from Carlos Hernandez. Melbourne victory lead 3-2. You couldn't make it up. It's unbelievable. Amy Park goes absolutely crazy. Well, a Melbourne victory got enough game winners on the park or what Billy Selesky take a bow what a Herculean performance out of midfield to start this attack feeds Hernandez who punches the defence line it's a close call but play on fair enough Thompson with the presence of mind to get it to the back post where Costa Rican Carlos leaps high and bangs it home with his noggin Melbourne victory of four that kick they're scratched and maybe they come home with the three points. Well, Q, a big sigh of relief. Remember Durakovic, no doubt. What a moment for Carlos Hernandez and for Melbourne victory.